I noticed that the UBA app for Curator has been updated to version 3.2. And a couple of things that I find remarkable in this uh, upgrade. Here are a new use group of use cases that you can actually read for yourself. And I installed it in my demo system. And let me start by showing you one piece that I, I'm not even sure whether this is part of this release, but I never seen it. So I think it is worth mentioning, which is the capability in the reference LDAP import app, which is another app in, in the app exchange the capability of importing CSV files into your table that is used as the LDAP definition for uh, UBA. And I just checked on the reference data import LDAP app and it was released on January 29 of this year. So I've been missing this one uh, for quite some time. Anyhow, uh, I updated mine. When you click in here, you need to provide a token for this table to be able for this uh, button to be able to be enabled otherwise if this, if this one is grayed out you click on configure and you add uh, your token here and then it will allow you to uh, import from a CSV and I actually have a small CSV file that I in created for this so I drag it into it I imported it before, right? But uh, you have the option of make a new reference table. This is if this is a new LDAP installation or merge it to an existing one, which is the one I chose. You specify which is the LDAP that you're using for your LDAP, for your uh, UBA dem, uh, the, uh, app. And in my case, it's LDAP demo, the one I have. And then on the attribute mappings, uh, I'm, you know, these are the, the, the stuff I selected before. I'm not going to do it again because, again, I just did it. But you will need to put the, the different in entries. And I put as the key my email, right? Once I added that and you saw the user that I, uh, that I actually placed in there, now I can do searches in my LDAP by... specifying the email address and if actually find the specific user and I've been replaying some logs for that uh, for that particular case very useful especially if you have let's say that you don't have a direct connection between your curator system and your LDAP but you can ask the LDAP administrator to export the, the user in a CSV file and boom you can import them into here whether you have this for example in the cloud and you you know you you no longer have to be directly connected to your LDAP for getting UBA to know who is who in the zoo and to get you know all the user IDs for all the individual users so the risk accumulated by all the activity from all those different users get added into that specific username very important feature another feature of uh, 3.2 is the fact that it now as you see here because I replaced some logs for LK, it shows that this user ID is active. So if you have, which most likely you will, if you have users who have multiple user IDs in here, you will see on under the active part, you will see all the one all the user IDs have been uh, been active and been used recently. And I'll show you what where you what recently mean in a second. And then you will underneath you will have the inactive one. Let me see if I find an example of the of one of the inactive ones. I don't think I have one where I can show them both. Uh, no, John at, uh, he all, also has been active, of course, because I this is on the monitor user. But let me look at uh, this particular guy. Well, this is active, but anyway, you will find under inactive those user IDs that have not been used which is very nice because for example you can help the people from identity management group to figure out 
with user account has not been used for a while. Maybe those are good candidates to be the provision, you know, or, you know, and, and where you specify that is if you go to the admin tab on the UBA settings, there is a parameter here for dormant account threshold, which is 14 days. You can set this probably to 60 days or whatever makes sense in your environment. Another feature that I really, really like, and I already was playing with it. I created a group called service accounts, right? And you know that you, you go into here any, and, and then you, you create a new watch list. I created a, I meant to say a watch list. Now, the watch list service account, in my case, notice how cool it has been defined. It has been defined, I mean, this is a normal setting, by specifying that is kind of a negative regex, that these accounts do not have an email entry. And that's typical for service account. I mean, typically a service account should not have uh, an email address associated with it in the LDAP. When that is the case, by putting this search, I actually did it in mine, and, and this is not correct because these users, the fact that in my tables, I don't have a user ID for them, that doesn't mean that they are a service account, but you get the point uh, that here you can easily extract from your LDAP all those accounts that do not have a user ID, and those are probably the best candidates for being uh, your service account, and you get that group created automatically. It's actually very nice. And notice that by default, also a uh, users with dormant account watch list is actually automatically added into the LDAP 3.2. And here is actually this is one of my users on the Win7 machine, i.e. user uh, that has been dormant for uh, more than 14 days. Another thing is that uh, the developers worked in the geography rules and apparently there were some problems with the, some of the geography rules not working optimally and they actually fixed this so you should have uh, even better results with uh, these rules for geography working better. And the final thing that I find very useful in 3.2 has also to do with the LDAP administration. In the past, when you were working with an LDAP, you kind of needed to know ahead of time the what's in the LDAP in order to be able to hook into it and, and, and to set it up uh, in, in, uh, in the UBA app. So now this is significantly easier. So I'm going to go here into the LDAP import and I'm going to add an LDAP import. And I'm going to populate this with a public, publicly available read-only LDAP to illustrate uh, how this works. In fact, if you want to play with this, uh, if you search by ldapforumsys.com, you'll find this publicly available LDAP for testing, which is what I'm using right, right here. And this is the base DN, also the same on the user ID and the username and the password, just a password. You test the connection and then you get a, a positive result like this one in here. And now this is the important part. When you get here, notice that you no longer have to know the nature of your LDAP ahead of time. This thing reads a sample of it and then tells you, takes you, gives you the fields that are in there. And also notice that it, it has an asterisk on the attributes that it strongly recommend you to select for your uh, for your uh, uh, usage of uh, in in your system so you click here next and then uh, you can actually add those those parameters so very is a much easier way of actually dealing with uh, adding LDAPs into your system while in the past it was uh, it was not as easy as it is right now. You needed to go here into 
There was some coalescent. Let me see if I find that into my where is my UVA? Here, yeah. If you remember on that, I mean, doing it this way was actually a lot harder than it is with the new with the new uh, improvement on both the LDAP app as well as the uh, the UVA one. So remember to update them both. 